Vice President Harris has been put in charge of addressing the root causes of the uh, border crisis, but she hasn't visited the border or Central America or spoken to leaders of El Salvador or Honduras. Uh, she was traveling this week, took time to visit a bakery in Chicago. Like many Americans, she got a snack. I think she's allowed to do that. I reject that hey, argument. Hey, Leo, that when was the last time you were in the ghetto? Wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Well, how was she how saying dare you that say you don't, that, sir? It, I was born. She was, I, was, I live right near the Coliseum. That's where I was I'm born. I'm from Avenue okay? C, dude. Next I'm from Avenue C. How dare you say that? That you know knowledge about that I have you, is helpful. How dare you say that? That knowledge I have is helpful. Insulting. That knowledge that it, I have from insulting. my background what is helpful. What are you trying to draw? Her, 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 do you think? Try let her, let her try. Let her try. What are you trying to draw? Let her try to. And how dare you? try to act no. like you are somehow a proponent of black people and businesses um, just to make a, a point and to try to create a wedge. It's ignorant and it's just disrespectful. It's disgusting. I'm done. Put me off. That's disgusting. I'm, I'm, I, I am nowhere near anything you're painting me to be and the problem with American politics is exactly that. Because I'm white, you think I'm racist? That's Eric, BS. I'm okay. done. W will, you, will you just I'm stay? Done. Eric, will you just stay for this question? <laughs> hey, maybe Eric's from Avenue C too, dude. <laughs> Everybody needs to lighten up a little bit. It's getting the folks out there. It's getting crazy. That first uh, thing you heard was Emmett Terrell. Uh, Lee Terrell? Emmett Terrell? Wait, Lee Ter I don't know. Was fought, was uh, <clears throat> Geraldo Rivera going at it with Leo Terrell, who's a civil rights attorney, and said, when's the last time you were back in the ghetto? And then the, the th then it was uh, Eric Bowling on BBC, a woman calling him racist. Pretty par for the course for the craven year that is 2021, as we're not bringing our best, a man, as a man once said. But I am going to start with something happy, Alice, even though this has been a horrific day, in which, Alice, we've, we've been, it's just great. This is one of those days that's crumbling around us, that, uh, you know, we have a project that we, we got stuck on, and uh, the kids were up all night, and Alice was all up all night after the warehouse, and... So we never got to the things, and now she's dusted off, and there was a, a horrific crime committed against me, which is the breaking <laughs> of my reading, my not my reading glasses, my glasses, my seeing glasses, by a child, uh, which is... T t uh, okay. Out of vindictiveness, not out accidentally. Of no, this was, yes. This, this was, was out of message. anger. Yes, so that is not good. And all sorts of stuff is happening, and I hear an eruption, but... Okay, so I'm going to... We're going to step away from the chaos for a moment and bring you some pure it's it's a thursday night alice or a friday morning depending on when people are listening we're going to enjoy some pure uncut undiluted idiocy good care of albion college now albion college was home to a horrific crime this week when racist graffiti was found Mm -hmm. Drawn in a classroom. So Where is Albion College? I have no idea. Okay, uh, but it's in the United States of America. Some racist graffiti was was found mm -hmm. uh, in a in a classroom. Horrific stuff. Horrific stuff. Using bad words and KKK and this and that. Horrific stuff. Now, um, of course, because it's twenty twenty one. That little voice in your head when you read about this a few days ago said, "You know what." This seems too cute to be real. It was found out that this uh, stuff was actually written by a black student, the racist messages, and the whole thing was a hoax. And so, um, it, for this week, the students at uh, Albion College have been out protesting because they're not going to accept hate in their school. Well, even though, at this moment, we know that it's a hoax, and everybody knows it's a hoax. The moronic, mostly white students are out boycotting, boycotting classes again for the third day, and they've made a list of race-related demands. Here is them chanting. Silence is violence. It was a hoax. Albion College. There's one white skinny dude with rolling luggage. He needs a beating, obviously. <laughs> At the protest? Yes. Silence, Silence is violence. Mm -hmm. Silence Say all the students. Silence because some hate Silence language was written in a classroom as part of a hoax. But they're still out there. By the way, if you have students at Albion College, these are your kids. Congratulations. You've created one hell of a great product. 
Um, and they have a list of race-related demands. Okay. So there you go. I assume they want a leadership role in the college. Uh, one of the listeners, I tweeted this out, a friend of ours, um, name, what is, oh, 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 don't everybody fall at once. Hold on. Hold on. A, uh, who tweeted this out? Uh, hold on. It was, oh, Dave, um, who's a good uh, Twitter follower, by the way. It's at DCC. R U E. Uh, he Googled up and screenshot the tuition fee at Albion College. Mm-hmm. It costs uh, $48,000 to send your. Uh, is that sp- just tuition or is that like living s- expenses too? It's uh, tuition and fees. Oh, okay. So, uh, undergraduate that's on the tuition lower and end fees. Now. Jeez. So this that's it's, it sounds it costs $50,000 to send your moron <laughs> to moron college. Congratulations if those are your kids. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, now we can get to some of the chaos. Leo Terrell is a civil rights attorney, and Geraldo Rivera are talking about the new mayor of St. Louis who said it's very important that she's the mayor of St. Louis because she comes from the neighborhood, and that's very important. Geraldo said feels that that's a good thing. Leo Terrell does not think that that's, uh, that that's a necessary thing whatsoever. In fact, he's incensed about it. Bill Hammer is the referee. Let the games begin. You have 48% white, 45% black. And the newly elected mayor, we wish her the very best of luck with her policy. Uh, Leo, here's the question. She said, I appreciate the role of white allies in this movement of progress. I don't believe that they have the lived experience to lead a majority minority city. Okay, so she said that. This will be an interesting social experience or power. The whites can't do it. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, let me try an experiment. That is the most insulting, racist comment. You know what she's saying? She's saying, because you're white, you don't understand what we as black people go through regarding crime. That makes the assumption then that Joe Biden doesn't know. To say that she is basically in a better position because she's black is insulting, is racist, and it makes no sense whatever. I reject that hey, argument. Hey, Leo, that you have when was to the last time you were in the color. ghetto? There's Geraldo. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what we say to black people now if they don't agree with all the social justice things. Yes, Leo, you, you've lost your blackness, I believe Geraldo's saying. When's the last time you were even in the ghetto? I don't even know if that word's allowed. Uh, Wait, a Wait a second. Wait a second. Well, how was she how saying dare you that you say don't, that, sir? It, she, I was born. She was, I, was, I live right near the Coliseum. That's where I was I'm born. I'm from Avenue okay? C, dude. Next I'm to from Avenue. I used to go to a bar called Avenue C, dude, that I loved in the alley in in Boston, Massachusetts. If you were an Avenue C fan, let me know. Let me know. The alley was tough, tough area though, Alice. These were like clubs. This was mm-hmm. the, this was where the cream of the crop went to um, meet uh, people to be. Um, to be romantic with, and uh, needless to say, I was not the cream of the crop. You how see, dare you say that? That you know knowledge about that I me. have you, is how helpful. How dare you say that? That knowledge I have is helpful. Insulting. That knowledge that it's I have insulting. from my background what is helpful. What are you trying to draw? Her, her order, do you to think? Let, let, her, her, let yeah. her try. Let her try. What are you trying to Let her try to... How Let her try you? a How kinder approach. That? Maybe you know, it'll Bill, work. You know what he, we certainly have You know what Bill just accused me of? Bill, Bill Hammer just accused... Bill. You know what Geraldo accused me of? He accused me of living in a particular area that I don't understand. How dare you? I've been a civil rights attorney for 30 years. I have fought against All discrimination right, for 30 years. Okay, Check your Jesus on How dare earth. you? How dare right, you? Listen, yeah. fabulous, I love you both. How dare you? you? Wait, let guys, hey, Jesus. we started out in a moment of peace. You? That moment is fleeting. Yes, we'll try is, again Bill. next week. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. You're Jesus on earth, Geraldo says to Leo Terrell. People just getting saltier and saltier. Here's Aisha Mills. I don't know what her deal is. And uh, Eric Bowling on the BBC. Because I think it's really rich for any Republican, especially a white man, to run around and claim that they care about the economic condition of black communities and black businesses when that's all a lie. Okay? There's that's nothing not, in their policies. Not just well, well, that's that's that they've done. Not the other to thing is, is that I don't me. work for the you Biden administration. Eric, I'm so sorry. We I can't hear you. I'm oh, going to let Aisha finish. I don't work for the Biden administration. Never have. But what I am is a black person in America. And everything that these voting laws stand for and what they look like are reminiscent to the Jim Crow policies that my families lived under. Mm -hmm. This, every single thing about it. So this is all... 
Jim Crow racism lived under families. Jim Crow racism. About racial discrimination. And how dare you try to act Never. like you are somehow a proponent of black people in businesses um, just to make a, a point and to try to create a wedge. It's ignorant and it's just no, disrespectful. That's disgusting. I'm done. Put me off. That's disgusting. I am, I am, I am nowhere near anything you're painting me to be. And the problem with American politics is exactly that. Because I'm white, you think I'm racist. That's uh, BS. I'm okay. done. What, what, what do you just Stay, Eric, will you just stay for this question? So the question we've got, Aisha... He it, leaves and then he comes back. Stay for one question, Eric. Let, let me put this I, to you. I'm, because I'm absolutely, I don't know why I'm staying here. I don't well, know why. I need an apology. Let me put to you the, the, the question oh, that, I'm not, I'm, that I'm, Mitch I'm, I'm McConnell not gonna apologize was saying. For being no. uh, Aisha, OK. Let, I think we've lost Eric. So I, I think we've lost Eric. Yeah, I would yeah. say that you've lost Eric. <laughs> yes, Eric's gone. I would have handled it differently if I were bowling. I mean, he probably he took the safe way out, but progressives mm -hmm. have a big weak spot. They have no defense for their own charges leveled against them. And mm -hmm. he had an opportunity to, to do that. And he had an opportunity to direct criticism of her in a way that she probably has never heard before. And couldn't even fathom it coming back at her. Right. He had the opportunity to do that. Maybe it's better that he didn't do that and didn't win the moment in this mm -hmm. case. Although, I mean, I think that it's okay for conservatives to just stop the argument and say, I reject the premise absolutely 100% that I'm racist and I'm not going to have a discussion based on a premise that is a lie. Well, you, you make a, a good point because it, essentially she stopped the argument. Right. She declared she said, you're not allowed right. to say that you care about black people or talk about the fact that these companies pulling out of Georgia hurts black people. You're not allowed to talk about things that could be helpful to black people because I know inside you're racist. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, why are we talking to this person? It, anymore? It, right. And the the intention, the motive to say something like that, mm -hmm. to say you're racist. The intense the the intention is it to be is for it to be a career fatal blow mm -hmm. and a permanent permanent scar on your reputation. It's meant to damage. It's meant to mm -hmm. hurt. It's malicious and it's punitive. And the left does it they it, willy nilly now, mm -hmm. but it ain't cool. And there should be some return fire on this stuff. I say give it to them regardless. Like, Did you ever listen to the thing when I went on the radio for in Lowell when they were calling me racist? Yes. You did listen to it? Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. they, they, it's a guy decided I was a racist, some moron in the studio. So what did I do when I got there? Um, You came out firing? I came out right up in his face right up pushing 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 mm -hmm. he's used to being able to say hey you're a racist now i've said that you're allowed to return volley and defend yourself but i wasn't going to defend myself mm -hmm. i was going to knock the ball out of his hand and maul him until he was thrown off balance because you don't get to say that you don't get to just say that right. and have it be okay and the right needs to learn how to go after people Never, you don't have to take crap from people at all. That's mm -hmm. a damning, horrific thing. It's a damaging to you and your family if somebody right. says that. It is as damaging as calling you a pedophile and actually maybe more damaging because the left uh, you know, protects pedophiles if they're good at art. So um, so we don't have to take any of this stuff. I don't, this, Aisha Mills is a moron, and, and she, yeah, in fact, of course, is an ugly racist mm -hmm. yeah you don't have to accept the premise of the other person i was on debate team in high school shocking i know <laughs> and this is um you know it's a whole thing in in a debate context right is that you don't have to What's you buzzing can, else i don't know sounds like somebody using a lawnmower like in the distance oh is it okay um but you don't have to accept the other person's um, initial premise. You know, you can argue on the basis of the premise that they present if you agree with it, but you can also just say, I reject that. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to... If somebody stands up and says, like, 
that you're wrong because you're a duck. You don't have to start from the fact that you're a duck. You right. can say, I'm just not a duck. That's not something that I have to debate with you. Like, <laughs> So you, if somebody says you're racist, you don't have to like be like, oh, wow, geez, I guess I have to do some more self-examination and right. before I'm allowed to You also to don't comment. have to t accept anybody's entreaty into word games like, what, you don't think the Black Lives Matter? You don't have to play these games. Yeah. Anybody. Nobody owns your time like that. Mm -hmm. You can say GFY anytime you want to, <laughs> and I highly suggest it. Um, so these are so bad... good for bowling. Yeah, so I like Eric Bowling. Had a, uh, a he got me too, right? Is that did what? he? Did he? Uh, I think I out of know. Fox. I think that's what I'm. I don't remember. Uh, but speaking of that, uh, speaking of uh, Draymond Green, who's a basketball player. Okay. Is now going at it with Megan Rapido, who's really giving it to him on Twitter. She's like mm -hmm. tough. She is not holding back. He had criticism for Rapido and other women complaining about pay, and this is his explanation. You know, I, I'm 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 really tired of seeing them complain about the lack of pay because because they're doing themselves a disservice by just complaining. You know, and they're not and, just. Huh? They're, they're not just complaining, really. But they are, because they're not laying out steps that they can take to change that. And so it, it's coming off as a complaint because the people that can change it, they're just going to continue to say, well, the revenue isn't there. The revenue isn't there. So if you don't bring in the revenue, we can't up your pay. They're going to keep using that. But the reality is, as true as that is, it's an excuse. Because everyone says, we support women. We support women empowerment. We support women in the workplace. We, we do this for women. We do X for women, blah, blah, blah. And everyone uses it to their advantage. Yet these women are not using these people that are saying those very things to their advantage. So then it just becomes a complaint that falls on deaf ears. I think he's a smart kid. I think that yeah. makes sense to me. I think that's well thought and an intelligent thing he said. And um and it's it's bright. If they if if their league's not going to pay Rapinoe because they're not worth the money, mm -hmm. make it hot for the league. Walk out. Threaten to walk out. Hey. You know, make them uncomfortable. Do whatever you want. You can it's Corporations aren't the only people who get to play dirty. You can also play dirty. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to. I mean, one of the reasons why some agents are so good and so well paid is because they're as nasty as the people across the table. Right. And they're good. It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be pretty. I think I like what he says. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do think that, that I don't I have time for the complaining anyway because it's just you're you you get you're a rich person now for playing professional soccer for a living. <laughs> I don't I, my my empathies are limited. But, but I think it's an interesting point too cuz his point is almost like all these people are trading on like wokeness and girl power and women's empowerment and we support women. So hold them to it then. You know? Why are you letting them just talk and not get away with anything? So I thought it was interesting, too. Um, I don't know if you saw that I sent you this thing that... Um, Sean Combs? Sean Combs You're wrote right, exactly to Corporate related. America. Yeah. Um, Sean Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, mm -hmm. a.k.a. P. Diddy, uh, wrote a piece for Revolt.tv, which I don't know what it is, but it's uh, some kind of online magazine. That's his magazine. own TV channel. It's his own thing. Um Oh, it is. Yeah, because that's what he's complaining about in this. Um, so he said that he has a problem with how much m advertising money gets spent at black-owned media companies. He said the same feet these companies use to stand, in sol stand with us in solidarity are the same feet they use to stand on our necks. When confronted by the leaders of black-owned media companies, General Motors listed my network, Revolt, as an example of the black-owned media it supports. While Revolt does receive advertising revenue from GM, our relationship is not an example of success. Instead, Revolt, just like other black-owned media companies, fights for crumbs while GM makes billions of dollars every year from the black community. Exposing GM's historic refusal to fairly invest in black-owned media is not an assassination of character. 
It's exposing the way GM and many other advertisers have always treated us. No longer can corporate America manipulate our community into believing that incremental progress is acceptable action. Corporations like General Motors have exploited our culture, undermined our power, and excluded black entrepreneurs from participating in the value created by black consumers. In 2019, brands spent $239 billion on advertising, and less than 1% of that was invested in black-owned media companies. Out of the $3 billion General Motors spent on advertising, we estimate $10 million was invested in black-owned media. So by my count, that's about three times than the national average that he cites. So they are doing better than other people. Like, like the rest of corporate America, General Motors is telling us to sit down, shut up, and be happy with what we get. It's disrespectful that black-owned media companies only represent 1% of the advertising market. It's disrespectful that distributors refuse to carry black-owned media brands in an era where our impact and influence is undeniable. It's disrespectful that the same community that represents 14% of the population and spends $1.4 trillion annually is still the most economically undervalued and underserved at every, dollar, at every level. Uh, and then he demands that corporate America reinvest an equitable percentage of what you take from the community back into the community. So he says if the black community represents 15% of your revenue, then black owned media should receive 15% of the advertising spend. There you go. So play woke games, win woke prizes. Yep. They know once you walk around and say, I don't blame Sean Combs for doing that, by the way. Oh, I don't either. If they're yeah. going to make money. That's what woke capital is. Mm -hmm. They've decided that they can make more money by running ads that say Black Lives Matter or have a pride flag in them. So why not? If you're part of one of those groups and the company is making money off saying they support you and love you and think you're great, why let them get away with just the words? Right. It's the same thing as the rap. It couldn't happen thing. to a better bunch of corporate jerks and i um i right applaud. sorry gm sorry gm right absolutely you want to insult americans and you know, in pander well there you go congratulations yeah good luck mlb good luck coca-cola good luck to all of them because um it's not going to stop taking the game out of atlanta isn't going to uh win you the woke prizes and you know these activists aren't going to stop there they're going to keep pressuring you. And once they know that that you're susceptible to that kind of attack, once they know that they can <laughs> call you racist and you'll give them money to make the problem go away, it's just going to get more. It's getting entertaining. So let's enjoy this. Sure, it's the end of civilization, <gasps> but it's this particular chapter may be uh, extremely amusing. Joe Biden is now has moved from uh, since he now can reconcile use reconciliation to pass anything he wants, including this uh, infrastructure uh, locomotive bill. He has now moved on to guns, and they could also use some restrictive gun laws. I assume, unless Republicans screw it up, and it's very possible that the, the House and Senate will be deeply in Republican hands in 2022 after those elections. But here's Joe Biden talking about gun violence today. It's the same old, same old. Today we're taking steps to confront not just the gun crisis, but what is actually a public health crisis. Yep. Public health crisis. Here we go. Why? Everything's a public health crisis. Everything has to do with inequities. Everything da 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 da, -da. You know the line by now. Nothing. Nothing I'm about to recommend in any way impinges on the Second Amendment. There are phony arguments suggesting that these are Second Amendment rights at stake from what we're talking about. But no amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. You can't yell crowd, you can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater. Did you realize you can't do that? I hadn't realized <laughs> that. Joe, that is... It's also a totally specious legal argument. There's no, no. crowded theater clause in any there's there's no precedent about crowded theaters in united states case law but whatever we call a freedom of speech from the very beginning you couldn't own any weapon you wanted to own from the very beginning of the second amendment existed certain people weren't allowed to have weapons so the idea is just bizarre to suggest that some of the things we're recommending are contrary to the constitution gun violence in this country is an epidemic ah it's convenient that right after the How literal it's only epidemic, an epidemic after um, there's a mass shooting, usually by a white person. Mm -hmm. um, another mass shooting that, did you hear about the yeah, one? Yeah, the football the, player. Yeah. 
Here's public. more pie than guns. Most people don't know it. You walk into a store and you buy a gun, you have a background check. But you go to a gun show, you can buy whatever you want and no background check. Most people don't know that because that's not true. Yeah, no, his... <laughs> His um, willingness to use these bromides are uh, dangerous. And he also said all kinds of crazy. He yeah, he does. He's not. He, he, I mean, this is Joe Biden. He's a cynical and dark politician. When mm-hmm. he said they're going to throw throw you back in chains, you know, ten years ago or whatever, that's the kind of guy he is. You can just check out his speeches from right. when he was throwing young black people in jail with uh, criminal justice uh, legislation in the nineties. This guy is an incendiary guy. What he did to Clarence Thomas. This guy, is, it's, it's always been his fallback. It's never been the nice Uncle Joe stuff. That's horse belief. Do you remember his old, um, in the last gun control push in like the Obama administration, him saying that you should have a shotgun and you should like fire off rounds into the air if there was a home invader yeah. or something? What was that? He just says, he just yeah. says insane stuff. He also said in this speech that you can use an AR pistol as a concealed weapon, which is like, I mean, that, <laughs> that unless uh, I don't know how you would use it as a concealed weapon because they're huge, but he's, he, it was, the left loves to do this where they just show off their, their, blatant ignorance about anything to do with guns and mm-hmm. if you press them they're like they'll defend it as like well i don't need to know anything about all these well, guns. no Why one need needs to? a an assault rifle weapons of war on weapon. our streets in yeah. every few years they do this in every few years it blows up in their face and it, this right. will as well because the people who own guns 35 percent of americans i think or so mm-hmm. own guns they know about guns Right, and they can sense when somebody's coming for theirs, and they don't appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And it, they ain't just Republicans, right? And uh, you know, it, they do this all the time. They don't know anything about any of the issues. They don't want to know anything about any of the issues. They don't care if it solves the problem or not. It's one of these things where we just have to do something. Mm-hmm. Yes. Even if the thing has nothing to do with what actually happened, none of the measures he proposed he's proposed would do anything to stop any of the shootings that uh, have happened in recent days. None of these guns was purchased at a gun show using an imaginary gun show loophole. None of these people... So in response to an action that happened, we have to pass a law that won't prevent that action. Right. Because we have to do something. We just have to do something. We can't just do nothing. We're better than that. Okay, so where is the vice president? I understand that she's been dispatched to the border. I was told a couple weeks ago she's in charge of that now. It should be good. Mm-hmm. She's a former uh, law enforcement uh, member. Right. Um, and uh, we need help at the border. There's a huge amount of refugees coming. It's not just, just like last year anymore. It's thousands and thousands and thousands more. Right. Than... We're smashing records and still heading up, and there's no right. sign of it And apart down. from the crime and the coyotes and now the um, sexual assaults going on, Right. And the lack of room and the fact that a lot of them are COVID positive and are seeping through the country, if not spreading it to each other. Mm-hmm. And the fact that from, apart from the idea that it's a complete humanitarian uh, health care crisis, I would say. Public health public crisis. Public health crisis, exactly. Um, for some reason, the person in charge of handling the crisis is nowhere near the border. She's closer to the Canadian border for some reason. She has not yet been to the border as vice president. Right. And so... How much does this administration, uh, how much is it concerned with this? Immigration and the border, um, as, as we discussed here today, Vice President Harris has been put in charge of addressing the root causes of the uh, border crisis. Uh, last Tuesday, she spoke with Guatemala's president, but she hasn't visited the border or Central America or spoken to leaders of El Salvador or Honduras. Um, she was traveling this week, took time to visit a bakery in Chicago. Um, I'm wondering, is she still working on this? And can you address the perception that she's kind of quite quietly backing off while Secretary Mayorkas is pursuing um, some Trump-era policies such as potentially building new border barriers and potentially prosecuting people who illegally cross. Pazaki does not like that question. <laughs> Multiple times. There's a whole lot packed in there, so let me just see what I can do here. Um, first, I would say... Uh, The vice president was visiting Chicago actually to talk about COVID and the importance of uh, communities getting the vaccine when it's available and accessible to them. And so while she was there, like many Americans, she got a snack. I think she's allowed to do that. (laughs) She's allowed to get a snack, honey. Was that a uh, sake bomb? (laughs) 
I wonder if the kids stacked a four high uh, think that was funny. She got a snack in a bakery. There you go. <sighs> this is somehow. And by the way, this was not just, um, you know, a staffer picking up something for her to eat on the mm. road on her busy schedule. This was a photo op at a black owned bakery interacting with the community. This was like a planned thing that she was doing to showcase this business and what they're doing and promote the vaccine. Like she's saying, this was not, you know, her just, you know, she sent some staffer to pick up a cookie. It it wasn't, it wasn't a snack. This is something she's doing instead of dealing with the border. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Remember she laughed when they asked her about the border? Hey, um, so very quickly, I, I want to play some happy sounds. First of all, here's something funny. This is a, a, a montage that's, that was done, not this year, probably a couple of years ago, of um, college students being asked about voter ID laws, and then black people being asked about voter ID laws. Do you have an opinion on voter ID laws? Uh, yeah, they're usually pretty racist. I think voter ID laws are a way to perpetuate racism. Would you go as far as to say they're, they're, those laws are racist? For sure. Do you think it suppresses the uh, African-American vote? Definitely. Uh, because they're less likely to have state IDs. These type of people don't live in <laughs> areas with easy access to DMVs or other places where they can get identification. Do you think that's harder for black people to go online? Well, IDs? I feel like they don't have the knowledge of how, of, like, how it works. <laughs> do you carry ID? Yes, I do. Do you know anybody who, any black so this is, now he's talking to black people. Black person doesn't carry ID. No. Do you have ID? Yes. Because I have my ID and my friends have their ID, so like, we know what we need to carry around. Yeah, everybody that I know have ID. Like, that's one of the things you need to walk around with New York with. I heard a lot also that uh, black people can't figure out how to get to the DMV. <laughs> really? Is that, is that, what does that say to you? I know it's that. It's on 25th Street. Do you know where the ID, the, the DMV is right now? It's on 125th Street and 3rd Avenue, I believe. <laughs> Love it. One more positive piece of audio. This is uh, a health inspector in Canada. Two health inspectors are converging on a restaurant. When I guess this is the owner of the restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, faces off of them. You can barely hear her, but uh, you'll hear the crowd gets into it in a minute. I am a woman, and uh, I Get out, they scream to the mask checking, social distancing cops, and the uh, health inspectors end up getting out. They did. Nicely done. Nicely, Nicely done. Unfortunately, that restaurant within 24 hours had their license to be a food establishment pulled. Well, at least they, they enjoyed. Down because Canada is now a police state. At least but. they enjoyed a good moment. All right, Alice, are we ready for this? Is it? Do we do this? Is there something you want to talk about before we get to the young woman and her grandmother, grandfather? Anything jump out at you? Anything you want to clear? Any housekeeping? I don't. I'm springing this on you. Uh, if not, that's fine. I think um, I'm okay. By the way, the, the um, merch shop is uh, rocking. Every, somehow there's been added renewed interest mm-hmm. in uh, all the merchandise, the shirts and stuff. That's great. The shirts are great. I think it was my modeling of my LGC I think it was, shirt Alice. yesterday. I think it was, but you used um, objectification. Um, I didn't objectify anything. Yes, you did. You objectified you. I had a picture of me. I look like what I look like. It's a picture. Yes, but having um, having the physicality of a female is using sexuality to move merchandise. I just took a picture of me. That's how I feel. Craven men, not me, probably feel <laughs> that that was a picture that was somewhat seductive. I just took a picture. Mm-hmm. Just took a picture. I just took a picture. What other people Mm -hmm. decide to read into that is not my problem. Okay. All right. So nothing? You all good? Shall I get to the Um, girl? I don't don't want to put you on the spot. You don't have to have anything. Um, I don't have anything at this moment. Okay. No problem at all. I like that shirt, by the way. Not one of ours. It's a Cove of Fefe shirt. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go, everybody. If you are um, thinking about... um, 
having a shot of Jack Daniels. Now would be the time <laughs> to do it. This is a woman, probably in her early 20s, a young woman who lives with her grandfather. This is a woman on TikTok. She is going to air her grievance. She's on TikTok mostly, if you check out her TikTok videos, she is mostly tragically dancing in most of them. She should not be dancing in these videos, Alice, any more than I should be um, like walking down a catwalk with just a Speedo. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <clears throat> she doesn't care. But she's not dancing in this one. In this one, <clears throat> she's got a grievance. This is Severus the Feline on TikTok. And this is about her a grandfather. My grandpa was watching a sexist movie last night, and I asked him to turn it off so that I could talk to him about how and why it was sexist and why I didn't want him to watch it in front of me. He told me that I shouldn't be upset about other people's actions. Okay, so you know what? I backed his car out of the garage, and I'm not going to put it back in. That's my action. I'm going to leave it out there, and I'm going to see if it bothers him. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to play Hot Girl Bummer, and I'm going to play that as loud as I want, whenever I want, at whatever time of day I want. Does that affect you? Oh, and now I can't live here, so. That was act two. <laughs> That's fun. She's been ejected from the household. So let's go through this carefully. My grandpa was watching a sexist movie last night, and I asked him to turn it off so that I could talk to him about how and why it was sexist. Okay. Now, I don't know if she goes to the Albion College, but probably one like that. <laughs> She's going to, he has to turn off the sexist movie, which I assume was not sexist, um, so that she can lecture him about, she's going to educate him on something. She's 21, he's 74. She's going to give him <laughs> c 300 cc's of life experience and knowledge. She's going to tell him it's his job to turn it off and listen. It's her job to educate him. I mean, what an offer. He has to turn off the TV and turn on channel woke moron for a few seconds so and why i didn't want him to watch it in front of me in that, here we go here's another thing and why and this is why this um this generation is just so fantastic and why i didn't want him to watch it in front of me now <laughs> i understand that She's not as mobile as some other people her age, probably, <laughs> for reasons why you'll see if you watch it. But if she doesn't want it, him to watch it in front of her, she could change what constitutes in front of her by moving her somewhere else. Then she'll no longer be, he'll no longer be in front of her watching a sexist movie. <laughs> she doesn't see as that is a choice whatsoever or an option. He told me that I shouldn't be upset about other people's actions. Okay, so you know what? I backed his car out of the garage, and I'm not going to put it back in. That's a little bit different. <laughs> that is not the same thing. It doesn't mean all actions ever. His car, which he paid for, like the roof over her head, like the food that she consumes, I would say in somewhat abundance, <laughs> Those are all things that belong. To, those are his things, including the TVs are his things. I'm going to venture those, that she may not believe in traditional property rights. Those, uh, yes, I would say that. So. Those are things that affect him. The TV show in no way obstructs, changes, or affects her whatsoever. As right. a matter of fact, she can just go away from the TV show. As my action, I'm going to leave it out there, and I'm going to see if it bothers him. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to play hot... By the way, I don't know, and I assume that she doesn't believe in this concept either, I don't know necessarily that this house is a democracy. <laughs> it appears to me that the car, the house, the TV, the chair, everything else... Probably the phone that she's recording yes. this movie on belongs to him where she feels 
that she gets equal representation and equal authority in that house is marvelous. And I can assume her parents and the college instilled that audacity in her. Girl bummer. And I'm going to play that as loud as I want, whenever I want. Now, um, she's going to play Hot, Hot Girl Bummer. <laughs> a song. Apparently. Yes. Hot Girl Bummer is not sexist. The TV show that Grandpa's watching is absolutely sexist. Hot Girl Bummer, there's nothing sexist about that. We're going to play a little Hot Girl Bummer in a moment. Oh, God. Whatever time of day I want. Does that affect you? So she's going to blast the, the song so that he has to hear where, and torture him wherever he is. That's the same as him just trying to get a moment to himself after having a long life provided for her parents and now her, but she's going to go torture him, and it's the same exact thing. It's him wa trying to watch what must have been, I assume, a lame movie. So now is the part where uh, he has come to his decision, and, <laughs> and she has been let go. Oh, and now I can't live here, so that's fun. The, the thing that's most... The thing that's most worrisome about this is that she assumed that coming back and saying, oh, and now I can't live here, was going to make people feel bad for her. Like, she right. was so in the right. I've been abused, 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 <laughs> abused, and now more abused. <laughs> that is psychotic, psychotic behavior. <laughs> the mindset is psychotic. This person needs to be eating a few different kind of pills per day out of a little paper cup that's pleated, a paper cup that's this big pleated, and she have, they have to make sure she really eats the pills and doesn't try to spit them out or hide them under her tongue or anything like that. And she needs to be wheeled to the porch for a while. They have, they should be, she should be somewhere where they throw her the ball, throw her the ball, and she gets to talk about you know what her happy thoughts with it. But this is just a run-of-the-mill college student. She is the same as those Albion kids walking out saying, no justice, no peace, no justice, over a hoax hate crime who think they're special, who think they're making a difference in the world. All they are is freaking spam. That's all this <laughs> uselessness is. All right, ready for some hot girl bummer? I'm ready. So I... Uh, who is this by? Hot Girl Bummer. Hot Girl Bummer is by something bear. It's some kind of bear or something. It is by Black Bear. Okay. I don't... Yeah. Okay. All right. I give you, Alice, Hot Girl Bummer. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hold on. Here we go. you and you and you. Starts off with a fairly <laughs> dark salutation there. So we'll start that again. I don't hate the song. F you and you and you I hate your friends and they hate me too I'm through, I'm through, I'm through This that hot girl by my anthem Turn it up and throw a tantrum This that hot girl by my anthem Turn it up and throw a tantrum This that throw up in your Birkin bag Hook up with someone random This that social awkward suicide That by your lips and by your likes I swear she had a man but Hit different when it's Thursday night That college dropout music Every day like that She be too thick And my friends are all annoying But we go dumb Yeah, we go stupid This the 10K on the table Just so we can be secluded And the vodka came diluted One more line I'm superhuman F*** you And you And you The vodka came diluted One more line That's not of poetry mm -hmm. One more line I'm superhuman Bleep you I hate your friends and they hate me too I'm through, I'm through, I'm through This that hot girl by my anthem Turn it up and throw a tantrum F*** you and you and you I hate your friends and they hate me too you you I don't hate the song True I don't hate the song But you know what another great thing is? That she assumes this will show him, I'm going to play this. It's really offensive and really says some bad things. This is a guy who probably or possibly was on, uh, you know, in a, 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 a crucial firefight in the Tet Offensive. 
and has seen the bleep and will be underwhelmed by her, by her attempt to okay it's all coming apart <laughs> by her Hi, attempt to uh to uh you know to roust him out of his uh sexist uh, golden years yeah it's not going to work not going to work Sally have you heard of the song hot girl bummer Good. You can't That's play that good. to her. I'm not going to play it to her. I'm oh. just asking. I want to see if it's permeated the youths. No. So that is where we are. Alice, don't go away after I play this song. Don't go away. Okay. I know that you hate when you shut off the video and something else happens, okay? Yep. Um, you can find us on Twitter. That's at Burn Barrel Pod. Um, and we are also on Gab and Parlor at Burn Barrel Podcast. Facebook.com slash Burn Barrel Podcast. You can also email us, burnbarrelpodcast at gmail.com, or check out our YouTube channel, which is Tom Shaddock's Burn Barrel on YouTube. You can subscribe there or wherever you like to uh, listen to podcasts, leave a review, leave a comment. All right, everybody. We had a great week. Thanks so much. We'll do it all again next week. Thanks so much for following the Substack and and, um, and listening. We all have all that stuff. We're having a great time here, and... Um, this week has just been awesome. You have been awesome. See you later.